Hello, I'm Scott McPherson, Assistive Technology Specialist with Upstate Cerebral Palsy's Trade Program in Utica, New York. This is the first in a planned series of videos for early intervention. This particular video is aimed at both parents and professionals. In this presentation, we'll give an overview of the trade program, give you information on what types of AT devices are available for loan for children birth to three, and we'll also let you know how to loan equipment. TRADE is simply an acronym for Technology Related Assistance for Individuals with Disabilities. Anyone is eligible to use the TRADE program. The mission of TRADE is pretty simple. We help people get the assistive technology they need either by providing it on loan for the short period of time they need it or by providing it on loan while they pursue purchase options either through insurance or out of pocket. We also help people and businesses with technical assistance and information regarding devices and funding for the devices. Our office in Utica is only one of 12 regional trade centers in New York State. We are funded by taxpayer dollars, by upstate cerebral palsy, and also through donations. Parents often donate equipment to trade after their child outgrows it, and this helps other parents get what they need for their child. Our area of responsibility is represented here, the seven counties colored green, Jefferson, Lewis, Oneida, Herkimer, Hamilton, Fulton, and Montgomery. If you live outside that area, there is a trade center for you. You can look that up at the Justice Center website or give us a call and we'll look it up for you. The building in the top of this slide is our office in Utica right at the outskirts of town. If you visit, drive right into the circular drive to the door and ring the doorbell. Essentially, we're in the business of helping children gain function, whether they have low muscle tone and need a wedge in order to help them lift their head, or are in need of a gait trainer to assist them to learn to walk. In later slides, you will get a better idea of the many ways we can assist your child. There are many areas the equipment we have for loan can help children. We'll be going over some of these areas. Currently, when people say technology, they usually mean high technology, and usually this involves computers or electronics. While trade has high technology devices, Assistive technology can be as low-tech as a piece of foam or a child's spoon in order for them to feed themselves. Assistive technology must be individualized. It is always about what a particular child needs. Much like t-shirts, one size never fits all. We try to use a problem-solving approach to choosing devices. In general, no matter what the age, the appropriate thing to use is the simplest, least expensive option that works to solve the problem. If a child capable of helping to choose and loves the color red, then that would be considered because they would be more willing to use it. Once a device is chosen, it needs to be tried out with the child to ensure that it works and that they can use it. If not, and it doesn't do the job, don't be afraid to throw that idea out and start again. At our trade office, EI loans usually involve mobility, seating and positioning, daily living, and speech communication. Young children with physical disabilities often need more support than an umbrella stroller can provide. Trade has adapted strollers to borrow. On the left is a conveyed cruiser, and on the right is a special tomato pushchair made right here in central New York. Usually, an adapted stroller will suffice until the age of three, but we do have some pediatric wheelchairs if needed for EI customers. 
Also, we want you to be aware that Trade does have pediatric wheelchairs available in case you need them when your child is older, even if not normally in a wheelchair. For example, we often loan folding wheelchairs to youngsters who break their leg. Gate trainers come in small sizes and in many shapes. Here are just two examples. We have many others, most of which have been donated to us. Generally, the child's therapist will let us know what type of supports the child will likely need on the gate trainer, such as a saddle or arm prompts. If a child needs less support than a gate trainer provides, pediatric therapists often choose a walker. The most popular is the K posterior walker shown on the left. The child uses the red handles for support and walks with their back to the closed end of the walker, while the creepster crawler on the right gives support to a baby learning to crawl. Different types of pediatric crutches are also available to the community. Luckily, many parents donate these crutches that their child outgrows and this benefits other children in the community while giving therapists the opportunity to try out options before they purchase. However, if something was donated and works well for the child, we may be able to give them to the child outright, which eliminates the insurance hassle. Trade also has a collection of adaptive tricycles. These tricycles offer additional supports that traditional tricycles do not. The one in the photo has a very adjustable rectangular handlebar with a hand brake, a backrest, and pedal straps, as well as a bar that can be used by an assistant. Good positioning is helpful, and we have many different chairs available, depending on the needs of the individual child. Some are wheeled, some are not. Many of these have trays available. Some have pommels, used to keep the legs from scissoring. Others have headrests, harnesses, and lateral supports for the chest and the hips. Some have footrests, especially important for children who push and extend their bodies and can push off the floor and possibly tip the chair over. A footrest will prevent that, and of course, tightening the seatbelt keeps their hips back in the chair, which tends to break up their tone and keep them from extending in that way. These are some examples of feeder seats available at trade. Some are static, some wheeled. For all seating, whether a wheelchair, an activity chair, or a feeder seat, it is vital to never ever use a harness alone without a seat belt, as the child could slip down and choke to death on the harness. This is a chair insert that can give a bit of extra support a child needs, plus offers a seat belt. These give them a boost, plus gives some extra support. They are also portable. With physical disabilities, positioning the child properly can help their development. We have different types of positioning equipment, as you can see here. Different positions can facilitate development of different muscle groups, while at the same time inhibiting others that are undesired. Each position, prone, which is on their belly, supine, which is on their back, or sideline can be supported with equipment if needed. Each of those positions are important in both what is being facilitated and what movement is being inhibited in order to help the child develop a normal movement pattern. Ask your therapist to help you position your infant or young child to improve their development. Therapists often use therapy balls when treating children in early intervention. Parents are often taught techniques by the child's therapist in order to increase the rate of progress. Therapy balls can be borrowed for this purpose either by therapists or by parents. Your PT or OT can teach you techniques that you can use in the many hours during the week when the child is not receiving services. Standers help a child build strength and develop deep hip sockets in order to prevent dislocations. Prone standers, which the child is leaning forward, usually have a tray while supine standers, where the child's weight is on their back, do not. Some standers, such as the one on the left, can be used in prone or supine and have a separate tray. Often, a therapist teaches the parent how to position their young child in a stander once they have adjusted it so that it, this relatively passive work can be done outside of valuable therapy time. Ask your therapist how often and how long your child should be in the stander. 
Support in bathing is important for safety, as children with disabilities are at an elevated risk of falling and drowning in a bathtub. Some bath chairs offer more supports than others. The Riften HTS, or Hygiene Toileting System, on the left can be used as a shower chair or as a commode, either on or off a toilet. The Riften Wave, those pink and blue ones at the top, also have tub stands so that the child is raised higher, which can facilitate healthy backs for parents. If you have a walk-in shower, they also have a wheeled base that can be wheeled into the shower. The one at the bottom right allows the child to sit on the bottom of the tub, but still have trunk support, which may free the child's hands so that they can play while being bathed. We have many types of adaptive feeding equipment. Scoop bowls and plates come with non-skid or suction cup bases that help a child eat independently. Different utensils, including bent spoons and forks or built up handles, any of these items could be that little bit of external support that allows a child to feed themselves. We also have a liftware level. While not normally an item used in early intervention, we recently had a three-year-old try that out and he was successful with it. Liftware level is an adaptive utensil that uses small motors to help keep a spoon level as it approaches the mouth, even if the child's arm is not able to smoothly handle a utensil. The utensil handle automatically responds to the arm movement and bends in the direction needed to keep the spoon or fork level. You can also see in the photograph that we have nosy cups, which allow a child who is at risk of aspiration to continue to drink with a proper chin tuck, instead of tipping their head back to drink. Children normally start to babble around six months, and most start speaking around a year, with increasing words and simple sentences starting around 18 months. If a child is delayed in speech, a speech pathologist may determine that an augmentative or alternative way of communication is advisable. Early use of AAC allows the child to communicate and keeps the frustration levels down for both child and parents. AAC use often facilitates language and speech development. We'll discuss that more in later slides. Like other assistive technology, speech devices run the gambit from low to high tech. The PEX communication book is a low tech device that uses symbols for words that assist the child in communicating. This system uses symbols and pictures on Velcro so that a child can place them to communicate. An AAC device is chosen depending on the child's age, ability, visual acuity, and current success rate. Speech pathologists often borrow several options of ACC devices to try with a child. American Sign Language is a low-tech but effective way of helping many children communicate. However, a child unable to make distinct and correct signs may end up with a sign system that works only with his therapist and family, which is similar to having unclear vocalizations that only the family and the SLP can understand. Neither make an effective communication method as the child's world expands to school and into the community. Whether it is signing or using a PEX book, or anything else for that matter, these methods may help the child communicate wants and needs, but also often help facilitate their verbal communication as well. Here's a higher tech device called a Big Mac. You can record one message on this device, and each time the button is pushed, that recorded message is played. If a child pushes the button and the recording says, Bubbles, please, it is important to respond and give the student what they asked for, in this case, more bubbles, so the student learns the power of speech and getting wishes fulfilled. Once a student becomes comfortable with a one-message communicator, you may turn to a two-message communicator. Uh, depending on the student's level, the therapist may start with a two-message communication device. Some two-message communication devices are a twin talk or other compartmentalized communicator. Each of these have relatively large targets for young children, and some have a place for 3D objects along with a matching symbol or picture.
Trade also has the next step in communication devices, namely with more choices. The one on the bottom left has interchangeable covers so that a child can advance from one or two choices to eight or 16 choices. The talkable six is on a lazy Susan. As the number of choices goes up, the targets get smaller. The Prox Talker is an interesting device that uses a similar system to a PEX book, but uses speech generation. Each card is recorded, and when that card is placed on the device, the recording is played. We do not have one of these at UCP Trade at the moment, but we wanted you to be aware of the existence of this device. They also have one that activates when the card is a certain distance away. It doesn't have to be placed right on the surface of the communication device, just in proximity to it and it will play what is recorded on the card. What we do have at Trade are software applications for speech. Using these applications with the iPad turns the iPad into a speech generation device. For children without visual impairment or a motor impairment that affects their ability to target, an iPad mini is quite popular. Sometimes parents tell us that their child gets around their phone easily, finding games and such, and this gives you a good clue as to how they might more easily get around such a program. Devices for the hearing impaired are available to borrow from trade. Those pictured here are very similar. The pocket talker's microphone can be pointed at the person talking and either earbuds or headphones used to listen. The personal FM device on the top right has a send unit as well. So that person speaks into a mic and the other device with attached headphones or earbuds allows the student to listen without distraction. While we don't send these out to too many EI children, it is good to know that they exist. The FM device has been found helpful in classrooms for assisted listening. The student can focus on the speaker without normal classroom distractions. And of course, this equipment has volume control that helps students with hearing impairment. Magnifiers are available for the visually impaired. We have low-tech handheld magnifiers to high-tech closed-circuit TV devices. The Mattingly mouse, shown in the center photograph, is just such a device. The Mattingly mouse is about the size of a large computer mouse and hooks up to a TV set through a wired connection. You move it like a computer mouse over the material that you want to read or look at and it enlarges it on the TV screen. With buttons on the mouse, the user can change the magnification level and also change to different color and contrast combinations to suit the user. The light box for the blind, shown at the bottom, is often used by teachers of the blind and the visually impaired to help teach visually impaired children. While it may be true that blind children aged birth to three generally aren't ready to learn to read braille, if you have a child who is blind, consider these statistics. While only 30% of the blind are employed, 90% of those who do have a job read braille. Unfortunately, not too many children are learning braille in school even though it appears that it is absolutely vital to their success in life. There are resources online to teach your child Braille when they do get a little older. High school kids use Braille note takers. While there are recorders to record class and readers that can read electronic books, think how hard it would be to find a specific place in a book to review without the ability to read, just trying to find an exact spot on hours and hours of an audio recording. So when children are ready, Trade does have some children's books in Braille, and they all have pages with tactile objects to go along with the stories. Titles such as Jennifer's Messes, and That's Not My Bear, and Geraldine's Blanket are a few of the titles we have on hand. Here's an inside view of a page in That's Not My Bear. This page has a furry bear in a pocket that the child can touch. This image is a close-up of one of the pages in one of our books. Each braille symbol has a six-dot pattern 
aligned vertically. For children who need them, we have toys that can be attached to switches, which activate the toy when the child triggers the switch. The relationship between their action and what happens is important for learning how things work and can give the child a sense of control over their environment. Also, for a child who cannot manipulate a toy in the normal manner due to physical disability, they still need to play to learn, so if they can trigger a switch, they can make the toy activate and therefore participate in playing and by extension learning. Children can also learn cause and effect with these toys. Learning cause and effect is important as a needed step before an AC device is used. For example, a child may learn that if they press a button on a single message switch that says more bubbles please, this machine not only talks, but also activates the device and does what the machine says. Or alternatively, the verbal message prompts another person to blow more bubbles so the child learns the power of words in communicating what they want. We also have many donated toys in our toy cabinet. These are helpful for therapists who are trying to find something motivating for a child. Besides the braille books, we have lots of children's books as well. Of course, parents can borrow toys too. Sometimes we even give them away. Funding for EI equipment is often through Medicaid. There are a couple of loan programs as well, including the Equipment Loan Fund, which loans up to $4,000 for equipment at 4% interest. This can be used for equipment or may be used to build a ramp. If products are purchased from the Adaptive Mall, there is the Kitty Pool, which acts like a GoFundMe page for their products. It's nice that people can donate to your fund. Plus, unlike GoFundMe, it's free to use. Another loan program is available through the National Disability Institute, but you can simply get a tax-advantaged account for equipment or other expenses. Trade usually tries to fill out the forms ahead of time. There is a customer profile, which is a form with information on the child, namely their name, date of birth and disability, and the parent's information, such as address and phone number. Therapists can sign things out in their own name as a provider, too, if they are trying out a piece of equipment or doing a trial with a child. Since it will be in their possession, they will be responsible for it and not the parents. Generally, we loan equipment up to 60 days, but depending upon the need, that time can be extended. Normally, equipment is borrowed to trial or so the child has the equipment to use while the adults wait for a justification letter and insurance approval or denial. Trade at Upstate Cerebral Palsy in Utica is funded by you, the taxpayer, as well as Upstate Cerebral Palsy and through customers' donations of cash and equipment. Trade is generally known for its loan closet, but we also provide the public with information and assistance, referrals, and information on funding. Keep in mind that trade serves all ages and all income levels, so parents and grandparents of all EI kids can use us too. For broken legs, hip replacements, you can get equipment that you need.